So, notifications. How do they work? What do we do? Ah, uh, that's a question. So we have like this notification UI or task UI. And I think, how does this work? There is a, an endpoint. If I click refresh, there we go, you can see tasks. And we get, we get a response and the response has just a, just an array of objects. I think this is essentially just the, like a list of tasks being pulled from Redis. So it has like, here's the task payload of like what to do, the status of the task, the last time it was updated. Um, yeah, all that. So as I recall, the way this works is that we are just pulling that list of tasks and then sorting by last modified and just dumping that out, right? So it's, it's just pulling the list. Um, let's maybe take a look at at the endpoint, let me go back to main. Pull down our, our changes. So we have a task API. And we have a few different endpoints. We have a git list, create, and then if you have the record ID, you can get one task, you can update it, you can delete it. Although I think these might not be implemented, nor are we using them right now. Uh, so I think the front end is just calling get list and getting the list of tasks. So how does this work? We get a connection to Redis, con. We do scan match. So we look for keys in Redis that match task item and then some numbers. Um, and then if we find that, we get that, we get that vector of strings. And then for each one, we're getting the, uh, the hash, uh, the hash map of that key. And we're converting that into something. And then turning that into JSON. Uh, and dumping that out. So that makes sense. In fact, if I were to open Redis, Redis, Redis Insight, and here's what that looks like. So we're filtering for task item. So I think task item is like the description of the task itself, whereas task data is the result of the task. Uh, and then there's also like a task queue that gets task items put the key, task colon item colon number, put onto the, the queue, uh, which is just, it's a list. Um, of, of tasks to be processed. Uh, as opposed to something where like, you could imagine a scenario in which the worker scans, it does a similar kind of scan of items and looks for things where the status is, you know, pending or something, but we're not doing that. Instead we have like a task queue when there are items in it anyway. Um, and there are a lot of items here because currently I'm not expiring. Yeah, I should update that at some point. Uh, currently not expiring or flushing out the items. So they stay, stay here forever. Um, 
I probably... I feel like maybe I have something on the, on the backlog already to deal with that. Um... Let's search for task. Add TTL. So let's let's rename this uh, to like task records cleanup. I might want to, for example, have a way to have it clean up completed tasks specifically. Uh, I'm not sure. Something to, to think about. But I, I do want to focus on that notification, right? This this item because it's nice to know. Hey. Uh, the task is complete now, which is not still processing. <laughs> it might be a while to, to do uh, speech to text on a three hour video. Um, but. Hmm. So let's take a look at task worker. So task worker is what actually does the work. So here we go, here's main. So in main, we we have the queue name, we pop a task off the queue, we update the status of the task to processing, we do the work until it fails, uh, or until it succeeds and then we mark it as completed and we remove the task from the temp queue. So. When we change the record, uh, let's let's do a little reading here. Do I still have a tab for Redis-related things? No. Okay. So let me let me do some googling here. Uh, Redis PubSub. How do you use PubSub channels in Redis? Oh, this looks familiar. Subscribe, unsubscribe, and publish. So we'd have a channel. Or multiple channels that a client could subscribe to. Pub sub exhibits. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Uh, at most, once message delivery semantics. So there, there's two aspects of the notification, or let's say so. What's built so far is really polling the list of tasks and seeing what their statuses are, right? So if we want to have something being pushed to the client, that is the change in status of tasks. Maybe we can do that. Um, so a thing that comes to mind in terms of building that, right? Is that the task API might have, um, how would we do that? So one possibility would be just like expose a web socket or long, long polling endpoint on the task API. And then like this would be a way for the front end, the browser, You'd have code that would subscribe to, uh, you know, it would, it would long poll or would listen on that WebSocket for messages. And then 
for the server side to know about things without having to poll itself, we would have a channel. And I guess the channel would be for task status changes, right? So it'd just be a dedicated channel for that, maybe. Uh, and then the task worker would, when it changes the status of an item, it would also publish a message. You could actually go further and actually like separate the task worker from the updating of the, the status by actually having a subscriber that updated, like it gets notified and updates the status, but I'm not gonna probably bother with that. Uh, I think that at most once message delivery guarantee is fine for like a notification of a status change. Um, we can always refresh. This is more of a convenience thing. Um, so I think there's at least three pieces. Like a, a bigger scale version of this kind of change would be where we uh, actually have a separate service, another service that's like a notification service. Um, and it would be, well, I think there's a couple of different ways you could do that, right? But if nothing else, it would own um, having a web socket or a long pole endpoint or something for the front end to talk to. And then either it would, um, I guess, in this, to, to not make it too complicated, it could subscribe to a channel in Redis. And that would be the interface on the back end to other things. Um, yeah. So what is the, what was the messaging look like when we're publishing to one of these channels? So we subscribe. Okay, that's the wire protocol example. Um, publish channel name second hello. Yeah. Pattern matching subscriptions. Clients may subscribe to lob style patterns to receive all the messages sent to a channel. The channel name is matching the given pattern. Interesting. So you can imagine something where there's actually a channel per task. That would be like tasks dot one, task that two, task that three. I don't know that I have. A strong need to do that. Nor is there any reason I couldn't adopt that at some point later if that changed. It is one of the nice things about working on a project where I'm the only one working on it. <laughs> if I want to change something substantially, uh, that's, uh, and no one else I have to coordinate with. <laughs> Messages received contain the original subscription causing the message delivery. Client libraries may bind the original subscription to call the hacks using the hash table. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. This is, I think, probably the original use case long ish ago. Uh, that I've I've used Redis for was WebSocket plus PubSub. Right, so you have like server processes that are responsible for listening for those published messages to clients. The difference is in that use case. Um, 
clients would be interested in only certain messages that pertain to them, whereas this is going to be more of a yeah, because this doesn't have this 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 program this this uh, glowing telegram doesn't have like user accounts or like separated things, right? So uh, I just want to know about if any tasks statuses change. Um, thinking about how I want to do this. So let's look at the task worker again and how it's set up. All right, so we have task worker um, and it gets a queue name. I might also have it take like a um, a channel name for like for notifications. And then what I would do is I would probably change this update task status function. Um, let's see, where is this defined? Over here in lib, yeah? Oh, to do, return a result. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Uh, there's only one user of this, right? It's just in the task worker? Okay. So, update this to publish a message. And then in task API, uh, would also need to know the name of the channel. Um, it would listen. It would subscribe to that channel. Uh, as part of like a... So here's the thing. Uh, XM and WebSockets. Is that, is that even a thing? Uh, let's see, Rust, Axum, Web Socket. Oh, there's an example in the Axum repo. What does this look like? So, just ignoring all of the preamble, we have a route, WS, um, that it's a get endpoint for WS handler. Okay. The handler for the HTTP request, this gets called when the HTTP get lands at the start of the WebSocket negotiation. Uh, let's see, load that up a little bit more. There we go. Uh, after this completes, the actual switching from HTTP to WebSocket protocol will occur. This is the last point where we can extract TCP IP metadata, such as IP address of the client. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Uh, and then WS on upgrade, move socket to handle socket. Okay, so we're, we're gonna move socket into this, and then we have the actual WebSocket state machine. One will be spawned per connection. So we, Apparently, send a ping. Okay. Ooh, receive a single message from a client. It's not going to be the pong for our ping or a hello message from a client. Wait for the message from a client. Waiting for a message from a client will block this task, but will not block other clients' connections. Okay. Since each client gets individual state machine, we can pause handling when necessary to wait for some external event. Waiting for this client to finish getting its greetings does not prevent other clients from connecting to server and receiving their greetings. Okay, so this is iterating uh, five times and we are trying to send a message. And if there was an error, we print and return. Otherwise we sleep. A 
splitting socket, we can send and receive at the same time. In this example, we will send unsolicited messages to the client based on some sort of server's internal event. Right. task is Tokyo spawn we're gonna spawn 20 messages send or send does not matter what the client does okay so I think the difference here is that if we do socket send this is like a back and forth so we send and then we're waiting for something to come back Trying to figure out what what they're trying to say here, or are we waiting for the client to fully receive this message? Whereas here we're sending this and we're not waiting. Okay, so we were spawning tasks, so send task and a receive task. I see. Um, trying to figure out, right? So in, in the use case that I'm trying to do, what we would be doing is we would be listening for published messages on our channel in Redis. And then every time we got a message, we would pipe it back to the listening client. Right, so this is how, like they could have five browser windows open and they would all get the notification when the task completed. Do I need to do that this way? Like, do I need to do Tokyo Spawn and then wait for the published message and then send it to the client or can I just do that on socket.send? Um, maybe the latter or the this way? So, do we need... Yeah, okay, and this is... If any one of the tasks has exit support the other. Maybe this will be fine. Okay, so let's look at um, the Redis clients. Is this the one that I'm using? So if I want to listen for a, like if I want to subscribe to a channel, PubSub is currently a work in progress. 
but provided through the pub sub connection object. Due to the fact that Rust does not have support for async IO and libnative yet, the API does not provide a way to read messages with any form of timeout yet. I don't think that's a problem. I don't think we need a timeout. Um, the server endpoint for the WebSocket, like we'll be in that what was described as a state machine, individual state machine for the client. And so we'll pull pub sub get message. Oh, here we go. Okay, so client get connection as pub sub, subscribe to the channel, and then loop over getting messages. So we get a message and then we write it to the socket. And if that fails or if uh, I guess get payload fails, get message fails, yada, 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 then we bail out. I think that makes sense. Hmm. Okay, I think implementing the WebSocket endpoint in Task API is going to be um, the more interesting part of this. So let's let's get started on that. So Task API, we have just a main.rs file with everything in it. Um, How does, um, there we go, Nginx. How are we wrapping the task API? So we're saying everything that's at API records tasks goes to strip off API records and we just include the tasks part to the task API. Uh, so that means that our our service here, everything needs to be inside of this route. So we'll do a dot route. Uh, oops. Slash WS. Yep, there we go. And that, that, thus it begins. I'm just going to jump to the, the bottom here. And I'm going to do instrument. WS handler. All right, how does it, how does this supposed to work? Uh, we ha we have an example. Um, we're gonna need some things from Axum too. Uh, yeah. It's not in there. It's not in there because our cargo toml for Axum, we probably need a feature listed. That's usually what this thing is where I wanna, wanna import something. Oops, there we go. Features full, I don't know. Uh, what do we got? Oh, it isn't now. Um, so in here, it probably shows us though. WS, yeah. Cool. All right. Just figuring it out. Cargo check is running in there. Okay, there we go. It's up to date now. Okay, so what is our WS handler supposed to look like? Uh, I don't, I don't care about user agent. So I don't care about any of that. I just want to do WS on upgrade. Okay, 
uh, WS is this. Okay, where is address coming from? Connect info. Do I care about address? What is, uh, stop it. What are we doing with who? Okay, we're just logging it. I don't, I don't care about that. All right, cool. So now, instrument async function handle socket. Uh, are we missing something here? No, I'm gonna save. There we go. And then I guess this needs to be a mutable socket. It's interesting that. Okay, let's let's get rid of that. We can do all sorts of things, can't we? Uh, okay, so in the example, uh, I might just take kind of this initial bit of code here, see if we can salvage this. Yeah, there's not a process message. Uh, can we just like print? have a who, so that's, that's not a thing. So is that, that's valid. <laughs> uh, let's ignore those stubs there. Uh, okay. So this might get us a web socket to interact with. And I think that's a good start. So let's build that. And then figure out how I'm gonna interact with it from the client. So. From the front end. How does one how does one do WebSocket stuff in the browser in twenty twenty four? Let's see. MTN WebSocket. I might just try doing this from the console and the browser and seeing how it goes. The build needs to finish, but uh, you know. In the meantime, still not finished processing that. So, everything is slow.
interesting. I see. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. What, what kind of uh, what's going on with that? Is that like um, CSS animation or something? Oh, it's gone. It's working really hard to uh, get this stuff built. Okay, so, yep. A resource is blocked by opaque response blocking. Interesting. <laughs> uh, all right. Where did the window go? There you go. So let's imagine this is already set up to work. Um, this would be like API, records, tasks, WS. Nope. It will be. It will be. Real soon. Mm. I mean, we're at 203 of 223 with only 20 things left. I'm so close. Escape, yeah. So this is the one that, that I actually changed. I guess there might have been changes to the AI API. Um, after the last time I built? That could be true. Almost there. Almost. All right. So, if I hit this, I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, can't establish a connection to the server at WS, localhost, 8080, API, records, tasks, WS. Interesting. Uh, WebSocket. Okay. Uh, no, that's the... Um, that's Vite. Uh, this is my request. 400 bad request. API records tasks WS. Is, was that the right endpoint? Uh, let's see, handle. So that's inside of, oh, no, I need to do this. And guess what we get to do? <laughs> we rebuild it. Should see a lot of cache stuff this time. Hmm. So basically, I just want to see that the front end kick can connect to this and then it's working and just proof of concept um, the task API is already connected to Redis so it should be relatively relatively straightforward to have it uh, get a hold of uh, the channel and subscribe even if there's not anything publishing to it yet uh, in fact while we're waiting for the build I might as well just let's let's start coding uh, that right so 
let's grab the connection code. At some point, I need to make like a, an Axum um, extractor. Uh, can we can we just do this here? No, we don't have state. Let's uh, let's get Redis into here. Redis. Definitely not be a state of app state. Um, let's see, what is that? What does the uh, signature of the function look like when we're getting app state? It looks like that, right? So in ha WS handler, like we should be able to just add that extractor. get that in there and the type of this is Redis client I don't know that we need to clone it okay yeah 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 Redis client is that acceptable um expected unit type found response oh right um, yeah, I guess we just return here if something fails. Yep, yeah, and then we're not using con, but we will be. So we're going to say uh, let pub sub. There we go. What's the problem? Yeah. Uh, expected struct Redis pub sub found enum results. Oh, this doesn't give a result. Okay, so we just need to do this then. Okay, cool. And then subscribe to the task channel. Sure, pub sub subscribe unwrap. Uh, and listen for messages in the task channel. Loop over, get message, get payload, received, send it. Uh, that should sort of work. We'll just have a channel called task, right? Um, and this should be mutable, apparently. Okay. And then we rebuild again. In the meantime, our uh, back end should have been updated, so this should not work. <laughs> Aww. Uh, bad request. What happens? Localhost 8080 API records tasks WS. Well, that's weird. Actually, let me uh, close that and we'll open a new tab here. Things are feeling kind of slow. Let's also open the task API service, see what its logs are saying. Task WS rejecting request. Header, connect, uh, connection header did not include upgrade. Interesting. Feels like Firefox is unhappy with me. <laughs> All right. Our history, yes. Nope. I mean, we're hitting the endpoint. Um, that's interesting, though, that it's saying in the logs that connection header did not include upgrade. Oh, and it's gone.
protocols. Um, could this be something where Nginx is interceding in a way that's negative? Like Nginx is eating some of the... It shouldn't be. I don't know why I would do that. I should check the Nginx config. Connection header did not include upgrade. I have to look at that. Uh, let's take a look at the Nginx config. All right, so we're just proxy pass uh, to the, the service. Definitely for the front end, we were doing something. Huh. pass through? Do we need to like explicitly allow it to pass through the WebSocket uh, for tasks? Will that automatically restart the... Uh, the front end? Let's find out. proxy three minutes ago I mean I could also just restart it and that'll take immediate effect oh yeah probably just need to refresh Hunt socket already exists. There we go. See V pulling it, everything. Uh, all right. Um, I guess what's interesting now is that, like, if we finished the well, we've almost finished the build. We finished the previous build, right? So the changes for it to dump whatever is published to the task channel in Redis to the connected WebSocket should be in place. Unfortunately, I still am not able to connect to it. Bad request. It's like, what is what WGET doing there? But that's the health check for the service. That's normal. <laughs> Uh, task API. All right, so connection header did not include upgrade. I really should have. What if I, what if I just copy everything that I'm doing for front end over here as well? If this doesn't work, I'll have to actually figure out how to do this properly. Proxy, restart. So the the proxy container 
is bound to the configuration, right? So I don't, I don't have to rebuild anything. I just have to restart it so it reloads the N Nginx config. Oop, not an error. Um, and then there was some stuff that I could copy paste here to dump out what we get on the WebSocket on the previous page. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, yeah, there we go. Bam. Did that, did that paste both? Yeah, I only see the open one. Okay. So, if I go back to my Redis client and I search for task, Bench, analysis, pub sub. Can I publish to tasks? Is it task or tasks? What did I what did I call it? What did Copilot call it? Task, okay. Um hello from server. Publish. And I go back to here, bam. Okay, I did subscribe twice. Alright, so we successfully pushed a message from Redis into the browser. Now we just have to finish the rest of the owl, right? Just finish the rest of the owl. Um, but now I think is a really good time for me to go find some lunch. So we're going to stop here for now. <laughs> um, I'm see if I have time this week to maybe make a little bit more progress on this, but um, I think it kind of naturally flows from here, right? So now we just need to get the task worker to put a, like a JSON message, uh, publish it, and then have the front end have some components to handle uh, toast, browser notifications, all that sort of stuff, right? So just the rest of it. But uh, for now, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna close away all the things. Uh, we're gonna say bye for now. I'm gonna go, let's go find a raid target. <laughs>